What's up everyone? I have a question to consider, and that is how are you preparing your children for the inevitable future? Actually take a moment to consider it. And while you're considering that, I want you to think about these companies that are destroying rainforests. These companies that are just taking out trees, that are mining uh, non-renewable resources, and really making it very difficult for the rest of us uh, to have a future, right? And I want you to think about the sentiment towards these people. Most of the time people are looking at these people and going, um, that guy is bad. And they're thinking this because it's obvious they're taking resources from the earth that are not going to be replenished anytime soon, which puts the rest of us who remain here at a deficit. And oftentimes we're looking at politicians making policies and things like that, that is not going to affect them because they're gonna be long gone by the time the consequence of these policies are apparent to everyone else. Um, but they get to reap the benefits. They get to reap the benefits in the current moment um, of extracting these minerals or re resources, right? And uh, the sentiment usually towards them is these people are nasty. They're messed up. They're greedy. They're not thinking of others. And it's really messed up, right? Now, I want you to consider this. If you are not preparing your child for the best future possible, meaning if you're just going along with the status quo, with what's already here, or um, you're just allowing these children to just get by instead of really setting them up so that they, they're going to have the best opportunities and so that they can make the most of those opportunities, meaning they can understand the world around them so they can see when an opportunity is presenting itself, they can understand it and they can take action on it. If you're not setting them up for the very best of that, you're acting very much like these politicians or CEOs or business owners who are just taking the resources that are here and not thinking forward, not thinking ahead. Truly caring about your child or your children would be to set them up for future success. Even things that we may not be able to conceive of or think of right now here in this moment. And you know we may not understand all the things that they would be able to understand by giving them those resources. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is many fold, but um, we can see that the world is rapidly changing right here, right now, in this moment. Right now, there's a big boom where people are talking about um, AI, right? And I don't want to get into a whole discussion about AI. I've talked about that on podcasts and things like that. But specifically, what's happening for children's learning? If you're going the... Uh, the mainstream route and putting your child into a school, they're not learning about AI in schools. I just talked with the teacher yesterday and guess what? She said they're not learning about AI <laughs> in their schools. That's not something that they're teaching the kids. Um, and this is really significant because if you look at schools, you spend 12 years going from first through 12th grade or kindergarten through 12th grade, right? And you spend six to eight hours a day. And you probably did that when you were a kid and your grandparents probably did something very similar. And your kids now are going to school and they're faced with the same amount of time, but the world has changed quite a bit since that time. Wouldn't you agree? And so there's some things that are being left out of their learning that would benefit them to learn now and prepare them for the future. Now, um, to be honest, school's not really designed in that way. School is really clearly, it's designed so that um, a child will develop into an employee and be able to go get a job. But the job market is completely changing right now. We're seeing AI take over the jobs of uh, not just automation taking over laborious jobs in factories, right? We saw that with cars, where now machines pretty much do the entire car from start to finish. Not a single person touches the car until it's done. But this is also happening on the white collar level. 
a lot of software engineers are talking about how their jobs are pretty much going to be gone in the next five years. They're really clear about that. And then on the other hand as well, artists, which we thought were safe and protected from AI, uh, we're seeing that AI is able to create these amazing, beautiful images that rival many artists. And it can do it in a matter of seconds. It can do the coding in a matter of seconds. It can do all of this in very short amount of time, which means how is your child actually being prepared for the future? What are you doing to ensure that they have a future where they are going to be able to make really good decisions based on an ever-changing environment because that's what we have right and so um i've talked to a lot of people and a lot of people have told me i don't know which is fair right um but there's something that you can do to make sure that your child's brain and your own brain is firing on all cylinders, right? There are things that you can do to make sure that you're not just leaving it up to chance. Because I'll tell you what, many people are not leaving this up to chance. You've seen in some of my previous videos and uh, other videos that you can find where I've worked with children who are way ahead of what anyone even thought was possible as far as their uh, reading and academic capabilities, their math skills, um, their reasoning ability. But even more to that is their ability to communicate with other people. And this is huge, this is key. Because in the future, um, we're already seeing that this current generation is going to be having trouble in the future with connecting with other people because this current generation of children are being brought up in an era where people cover their faces, uh, wearing masks, uh, people do not come readily up to you and, and talk to you as they used to. Um, people are, are distancing themselves more and more. More and more uh, you experience somebody else through a screen rather than in person. The consequences of that can be seen pretty obvious these children are going to have a harder time with that social aspect. Now, I'm not just talking about the social aspect, but I think it's important to bring up because a lot of the parents that I talk to don't really prefer the school system. In fact, they see the major problems um, and it seems like every day there are more and more major problems that scream, get your kids out of school. Uh, for instance, I just saw an article about the Chicago public school system where there are some pretty nasty allegations against uh, the teachers and there's been over 600 allegations and over half of them have been substantiated. And that is pretty scary, right? Um, and if you really wanna look into that, you can send me a message and I can show you the articles um, because it's very insidious, right? It's, it's very, something that you would not want to have happen to your child. And I'm not gonna go into detail about the specifics here, but I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. And a lot of the parents that I speak to, they don't want that to happen to their kids. They also don't like uh, the things that are being taught to kids that they're seeing in the media. They don't like that that's even a thing that's uh, a problem. They are also aware, as we've been seeing more and more and more, that kids aren't actually learning in school. The New York Times came out with an article that showed that Fourth graders, 30% of fourth graders are reading at fourth grade level. That means over, oh, well, I think it's about 33%, but over 66% are not reading at grade level. That is scary. That means two thirds of the, that's the majority of them. More than just the majority. That's basically the school is failing. They're not getting your kids to be able to read. And they were showing the same thing with math. And they were showing that this doesn't get better over time. By the time the kids reach eighth grade, it's even worse, even less of them are reading at grade level. And so um, these are really important points to be aware of for any parent. If you're gonna be putting your kids in this system, you have to be aware that 
not only are you putting your kids in this system, um, but here are the flaws of this system, the major flaws of this system. And these are what you can expect out of that system. But also there are, are alternatives. Um, I was just watching a video with Dr. Phil where he was talking about how 130 million Americans cannot read at the most basic level. And he went further to say how we're seeing now um, in many cases that a 45% to a 64% is considered a C now, a passing grade, where in the past, 45% uh, would have been an F. And, and I've been talking with a lot of parents again, and they've been saying, yeah, my kid's passing, and I'm not sure how they're passing. They're definitely getting the, the pat to keep going ahead, but they're not learning very much. And so think about this. You are not learning very much. You're in a class, you're not learning much, and then you get advanced to the next level. Are you gonna be more prepared for that next level or less? Is it gonna be more fun or more challenging and not in the good way of challenging, but like you feel like you got, you missed out on something. If you've ever had that experience where you feel like, ah, there's something I'm not getting here. Like maybe I, I, I'm missing out on something. Maybe something's wrong with me. Um, you start to doubt yourself and you start to have an aversion to learning at all. Um, I remember when I was a kid, when those little messages would come up before movies and I would try to read the whole thing and I couldn't get through it. And I would ask myself, you know, quietly in my own mind, is there something wrong with me? Because this message just flashed up really quickly and I'm assuming you're supposed to be able to read the whole thing, but I never get through the entire thing. Maybe I'm slow, right? And so I know that kids are thinking that, and I've talked to a lot of kids as well, and they'll tell me they're, they feel this insecurity because of the system that they're in. And so if you're just going along with that system, you're setting your kids up for failure, plain and simple. And even if you take your kids out of school, which I think is a better alternative, um, just because you took them out does not necessarily mean that they're going to get everything that they need. Just taking them out and leaving it to chance is again, not planning for future success. A more effective route would be to give them the ability to understand the entire world around them. And that is what I do. That is what I share with the parents that I work with. And you can see the results of that. We have kids who are reading by three years old, uh, by six, they're reading chapter books. They're able to do uh, symbolic logic. They're able to do um, computer science, essentially, that create code, describe themselves effectively, share with others and reason these are all really important things. They're able to do math at an incredible, incredible, amazing um, rate where, where they're, they're going very fast, but they're also very accurate. And they're thinking way more advanced than your average child is thinking. They're thinking even more advanced than what you would consider your smart kids in your classes, right? And. I'm bringing all this up because if you think about the future, where we're heading as a society, we have amazing technologies available to us, but if we remain the same people, that technology is only going to be abused. It's not actually going to produce the effect that people imagine and would like to see because people are not willing to do the work essentially to get that result. And by do the work, I mean, it takes some work to ensure that your child is able to understand the world around them. It means you can't lie to them. It means that you have to be present for them. It means that um, if there's something going on in your environment that's not best, you have to be willing to stand up to that. And it means that you have to consider going against the grain. You have to consider um, how the consequences of your actions are going to play out, but it's worth it, right? 
In, in order to do a math problem, if you wanna be good at math, uh, let's say algebra, for example, you have to do the work first of learning the numbers. And then you have to do the work of learning what addition is and understanding addition and then subtraction and understanding subtraction and then multiplication and division and so on and so forth, right? And, and so if we want to see a world where we don't have to worry about people starving or people dying of uh, preventable causes and people being discriminated against because of their culture or the color of their skin or uh, their gender or whatever. If we want to create a world where that is eradicated or at the very least minimized as much as possible, but I'm going for eradicated, right? Then we have to be willing to put in the work and the work is actually understanding where these things come from, understanding things at a very basic foundational level to be able to make rational decisions, not based on just emotion. Because when we get emotional, we can make decisions that don't make sense. And that's where we're at right now. We have a lot of emotional people arguing for this, arguing for that, but not coming to a consensus of what's the best route, what's going to have the best outcome for everyone, right? And so that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to create a world that's best. I'm here to end child slavery, child abuse, child poverty. I'm here to make that a reality. Not just give it lip service, but actually do everything I can in my power to create that. And the logical way that I see of doing that is creating genius children who are raised with principles to consider what is best for everyone, animals, plants, people, uh, the resources that we have on this planet. Because if we don't do that, then we're setting ourselves up for failure. I'm asking you to join me on creating a world that's best. If this makes sense to you, if you want this for your children, if you want them to be that kind of person who's actually considerate and can consider others, um, and at the same time, uh, very intelligent, not lacking at all, not lacking in confidence, um, and also that you have a great relationship with your children. I encourage you to reach out to me, uh, send me a message uh, that says community, because we're building an amazing community of people who are already doing this, and we're growing that community more and more and more so that we can share that with eventually everyone on the planet. All right, I hope to see you soon, bye.